the sixth session in our study of the 12 habits to strengthen our walk with our Savior. In this sixth session, we will explore the privilege from the whisper of God, fellowship. In today's world, we often have an independent or go-it-alone mentality, yet, like Redwoods, we will find it easier to stand strong when we stand together. When we make a conscious, intentional effort to foster relationship with others, we are also trying to follow Jesus wholeheartedly and are engaged in the spiritual discipline of fellowship. So, when we open ourselves honestly to others who are like-minded, we will find sustenance and encouragement in life's back-breaking storms. So, what exactly is fellowship. Well, it may be defined as friendship, partnership, gathering, camaraderie, building and encouraging relationships, brotherhood, hanging out, getting together. Suddenly it doesn't sound so bad at all, does it? You know, but scripture gives us more than a subtle hint about fellowship. It started in Genesis, Genesis 2 verses 18. It's not good for the man to be alone. Also, in Hebrews 10, 25, it says, Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another. Also, in Proverbs 18, 24, there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Bottom line is, God did not intend for anyone to fight life's challenges by themselves. Once again, in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12, the body is a unit, though it is made up of, as, of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. Now, the word in Greek is used in many ways, but here it is basically means community. The passage says the community is a unit, although it is made up of many parts. Any assembly of Christians is a gathering of the body. We are one body with many parts. We need one another to function effectively. We see this once again in 1 Corinthians 12, 15 to 20. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them just as he wanted us to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. We all have different parts to play in this body. God designed us that way on purpose so that we need one another to survive as a body. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians 12, verses 21 to 22. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. Those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Do you see where this is going? If you don't believe it is true, try walking without your little toe or opening a door without your pinky finger. Almost impossible. God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffer, suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. 1 Corinthians 12, 24 to 26. That's supposed to happen through fellowship. God did not intend for any of us to live out Christianity as lone rangers. We must accept our place in the body. The picture is, I need you and you need me. So why should we pursue fellowship as a spiritual discipline? So God's not given any of us everything we need to follow him successfully. Instead, he chose to give us one another to fill each other's gaps. We are indispensable parts of one another. The most powerful force in the world is our relationships. 
Christian fellowships are unique because they're built on the foundation of Christian love. You instantly have a connection because our parts are linked with his part and the parts become whole. So why is it important to live out a commitment to fellowship? Hebrews 10, 24 illustrates that biblically. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Spur on could also mean provoke, challenge, or inspire. The Greek word could mean to stimulate another person to love and to good deeds. Hebrews 10, 25 goes on to say, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The, the bottom line from these verses is that Christian fellowship is designed to spur us on. God's plan is that we will exhort one another and encourage one another. You know, exalt, exhorting one another. Basically, sometimes even when we're down, we need someone to exhort us and to spur us on and tell us that we can do it. A good old kick in the pants, right? Remind us that we've got God backing us up and that we will get through this. If you don't open yourself up to someone and admit that you have a decision to make, your fellow believer cannot exhort you and help you through your crisis. We should also be encouraging one another. Sometimes we need comfort and encouragement. Encouragement is the food of the heart and every heart is a hungry heart. It can happen intentionally or unintentionally. You feel like you're, you're wilting. You need a drink of encouragement. The best option is to drink regularly and do not wait until you're wilting. But it's hard to drink if no one's around to give it to you, right? When you take a drink of fellowship and are exhorted or encouraged, you see Jesus alive right in front of you. Because you'll, you'll see Jesus in your fellow believer's actions. How do I know that Jesus really loves me? Because your fellow believer really loves you. None of us is complete, but together we are whole. In his wisdom, God has not given any of us everything that we need. Instead, he chose to give us one another. Fellowship to me was an essential and pivotal part of me accepting my calling. My friends, my Christian sisters exhorted and encouraged me with prophetic visions and words that reinforced what God was putting on my heart. The privilege of fellowship will always be a central focus in my new and invigorating walk with Jesus. So how do we pursue, pursue this privilege of fellowship? Well, one, we need to get into or start a small group. We have to intentionally seek out relationships with other Christians. I challenge you to do that. Surround yourself with those who will hold you accountable. You need friends who will give you a need at kick in the pants through exhortation or who will be encourage you and strengthen you when you need a drink of encouragement. Number two, get into a, a small group Bible study. I think uh, one of the first things I would do would be to get a group of eight or ten around me that would meet a few hours a week and, and pay the price. It would cost them something in time and effort, what, but would pay great rewards and encouragement. Number three, get involved with people in your church. The sheep that the wolf always goes after is the one that's been separated from their flock, right? Don't separate from your flock. If you're not in church, why not? It's completely biblical to do so and completely unwise not to do so. Besides, besides so many rich and rewarding encounters are given and received when we regularly assemble with our, our fellow Christians. Don't try and be a lone ranger Christian. It just, it does not work. So as you can tell, fellowship has been and is important in my Christian walk. So. Thank you for joining me in this, this session that I just love discussing. And I just have some further discussion questions I'd like to go over with you to help us uh, further our discipline and privilege of fellowship. Number one, how has someone spurred you on or encouraged you recently? Maybe a family member or someone in your small group? How did it make you feel? Number two, Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 makes fellowship mandatory. Do you agree or disagree? 
Explain your answer. Number three, what barriers keep believers from genuine fellowship with one another? And number four, do you need to give or get more genuine Christian fellowship? Explain your answer. And what will you do about it? I'd like to always leave you my contact information at the end of each session. So if there's anything that I could possibly help you with, I truly would like you to reach out to me. So I'm putting up my business card on the screen and what you have, you have my cell phone, my work phone, my email address, the website address for Vertical Life Church. And then you've also got a friendly invitation to join us on Sunday mornings at 1045 for church service at the Clio High School Auditorium. So I'd love to get your feedback on the series. Uh, anything else that I can do for you, there is a workbook available at the Connection Center every Sunday. If you're not in the area and you're catching this on the internet, please reach out with an email to me. I'd love to send you an emailed copy of the workbook for you to use. And I can't wait to see you at the next session.